All right, section 6.6 .6 in the Sullivan book is called logarithmic and exponential equations. And basically, there are equations in the section that we are going to solve with different methods. Um, a logarithmic equation has log or natural log in the equation. And of course, an exponential equation is where the variable is the exponent. The exponent is the variable, so that's called an exponential equation. So the first one here is a log equation. We're going to solve this. And basically, what we notice right here is log base 5, log base 5. So those are the same. So if the bases are the same, then these parts right here are the same. So this part here is equal to this part there. So we just algebraically set those equal to each other. Okay, let me warm my pen up. Oh, I've got to turn this on. There we go. Warm the pen up. There we go. So we just set 2x plus 3 equal to 3. And we just solve this like an Algebra 1 problem. Subtract 3. And then we get uh, 2x is equal to 0. So, of course, x is equal to 0. Now, when you're doing this kind of problem, you're changing it from a log equation to a linear equation. So we call this a linear equation, like that you solved in Algebra 1. And we need, we have like x to the first power here. That's what makes it linear. And the the thing is, you've changed the kind of equation it is. So sometimes weird things happen. You get can get extra answers. So the extra answer um, can happen with this extraneous solution is what we call them. So we have to make sure that the answer zero works back in the original, and and it does. It has that has to be zero there, so that has to be zero. So it'd be three, and then that would be three over there. So no problem. But you'll see an example as we go through this of ones where the original um, or the answers will not work back in the original problem, not the things that would change, but back in the original. <clears throat> example two. So this one here, notice that the uh, bases are the same. And we have addition here. So what does addition mean with the rules of logarithms? Addition means multiplication. So we're going to multiply here. So we got log base 6, and we're going to have x plus 4 times x plus 3, and then that's equal to 1. And now we're going to go back and remember our rule that when we have um, this number here, that's your base, Math logarithms are the mathematics of exponents. So my exponent's over here, and then my answer is right here. So we're going to switch it back to exponential form from log form. So our base is 6 to the first power. So base exponent is here. And then that's equal to the answer uh, x plus 4 times um, x plus 3. All right, so now I'm going to move this down here. Now, we, are, we will um, go ahead and foil this out because now we have a quadratic. So you have to be careful here because we switch from a log equation to a quadratic equation. So how do we solve our quadratics? Well, we set them equal to 0 and then factor or do the quadratic formula or something like that. So x times the 3 makes um, 3x, and then that would be 4x. So we have 7x in the middle when we foil this out, and then 12 because that times that's 12. And that's equal to 6. Okay, set our quadratic equal to 0. I'm going to subtract the 6 over. So I get x squared plus 7x plus 6, because I subtract the 6 over, equals 0. This one here factors. If you're not sure if something factors, uh, you can always see if the discriminant's equal to 0, or you can just use the quadratic formula, because the quadratic formula obviously solves all quadratics. By the way, what do um, baby parabolas eat? The <laughs> quadratic formula. Okay, so plus 1 plus 6. So that's how that factors out. Then we do 0 product proper t. And extend the page here. So we get x plus 1 is equal to 0. And then we get x plus 6 is equal to 0. So x is equal to negative 1, and x is equal to negative 6. All right, those are the two answers. Now, does it, do they work back in the original? So I'm going to go back to full screen here and look at this. What if I put negative 1 back in? Well, 
negative 1 plus 3 is 2, so I can take the log of 2, that's okay. And negative 1 would be okay here, because that would be 3, I can take the log of 3. So this is an okay solution. But when I put negative 6 back in the original, it would be negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3, and I'd be trying to take the log of a negative number, which I can't do. So this answer is a solution to the quadratic, but not a solution to the log equation. So that's where the extraneous solution comes in, because I'm changing the kind of equation it is. It's no longer a log equation once I switch it to the quadratic right uh, here. Here you can really see that it's a quadratic because it's, it's x squared. But once you write it this way, it's also considered a, a quadratic equation. Okay, example three. Ooh, this one looks kind of complicated, but um, you know, with a little uh, consolidating the rules Consoli not the rules, but consoli consolidating it, condensing the equations, this one can be done uh, fairly easily. Okay, subtraction with logs. Subtraction with logs uh, means what now? What does that mean? That's right, division. But first, before we divide here, I'm going to bring this exponent up here, and that will be squared, which it'll turn into 25. So I have subtraction there, which means division, so I write it out. So I'm just condensing this together, log base 3, making a fraction. The x is on the top of the fraction. The x is on the top of the fraction, and then uh, that 25 is going to be on the bottom because the, the 2 is no longer there. It's up here, and then that's 5 squared. That's 25, so I'll put 25 right there. Okay, and then equal to, and this will be kind of like question 1. Um, the, the, the log base is the same, so then these parts here are going to be the same. And then I have the division over here because of the subtraction. And oh, I almost not didn't take this up. So this isn't there anymore. That's squared. So that would be 100. So I need to put 100 down here. I missed that. I didn't quite catch that. So there we go. So each one of those gets squared. Uh, this one over here turns into 100. This one here turns into 25. And then I divide the two. Okay, now I'll turn on the uh, highlighter, which is here, and then I do the same thing I did last time. So these two things are the same. These are the same here. Okay, so we got base exponent. No, I don't have to do base exponent answer. Those are the same, so I just go back to my algebra here. Turn my pen back on and go down here. So I just set these equal to each other. X over 25 is equal to X plus 1, x plus 1 over 100. Now this is a linear situation because I have x to the first power here and I have x to the first power there. So this just solves like an Algebra 1 linear equation. But it's two equal fractions and two equal fractions is called a what? And you said like the sides of a triangle, they are, starts with a P. That's right, proportional. They're proportional to each other. So we solve proportions by cross multiplying. Anytime you have a binomial here, you have to make sure you distribute. So it's 25 times the x be 25x. And then the 25 times the 1 would be plus 25. So the distributive property is always in, in play. Then we're going to multiply this way, and we get uh, equals 100x. All right. So now this is an Algebra 1 problem. Get the variables on one side, numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract over the 25. That's going to give me 75x. Divide the 75 back. So I divide each side by 75. There are three quarters and 75 cents. So that's going to simplify to one third. Okay. Then the same thing is true. I got to make sure it does the one third to interfere with anything in the beginning of the problem. Um, let me. Let me see. I need to erase this out of there so I can see eraser. I need to, oops, it didn't switch to the eraser. Eraser and eraser and erase. Okay, so I'm erasing this out here because I have to go back to the original. Okay, so right here I have log of one-third, log base three of one-third. That's okay. And then that's just a number, and then one third plus one, that's positive. So one third is, yeah, that's okay. That's an okay answer. Um, number four, there's two more examples, example four and example five. Now this is an exponential equation. So uh, how do I know this is an exponential equation? Because the variable is in the exponent position. 
So with any kind of equation that you solve, if you can do a basic algebra step first to clean it up before you start the fancy steps, you always do that first. So the basic thing that we can do this from like straight out algebra one is getting rid of this uh, decimal point in the, in the front here. So this is multiplication. It's 0 0.3 times this business here. So I'm going to divide that 0 0.3 over that three tenths. Okay, so that cancels out. And so I'm going to go back to black again. So I got four to the exponent of 0 0.2x is equal to two thirds. So two thirds. So uh, basically it's a ratio of two to three and the decimal point would move over if you multiply each of them by 10, so it's two thirds. And now I can rearrange it, base exponent answer. Now I don't have to worry about extraneous solutions on this because the domain of this is all real numbers. X can be anything, X can be positive, X can be zero, X can be uh, negative, and it doesn't matter what X is, there's going to be some, that they, you can put X in there, but there's only one specific X value that does work for this. So um, we go down here, and I'm just going to rearrange this. The base is what? The base is what? The base is four, right? The base is four, and uh, the answer is over here, so that's next, two thirds. So log base four two thirds is equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.2x. So now we're going to get, um, and that's is what base exponent answer. Base, base, um, and then the exponent goes over here, and then the answer goes right there. Divide the 0 0.2 over. That cancels out, becomes 1, and we get uh, x. So we get x is equal to. Now, if you recognize this 0.2 as 1 fifth, that kind of helps. So this is one, really 1 fifth. All right, since that's 1 fifth, you would invert and multiply that. So that's going to flip up and multiply. The 5 is going to flip up and multiply to the top. So, this is really 5 times log, oh, I left, left out the O, L-O-G, log of 2 thirds. And that's a pretty good answer. You could change that into subtraction if you wanted to, but um, when, you, when you divide by a fraction, right, you divide, by, divide fractions, um, you have this, and then divided by this fraction, you invert and multiply, so it flips it up and makes it 5. All right, let me check my time here. How, how are we doing for time? Uh, this is 13 minutes, so this is the last example. All right. Um, back to here, reduce that, and go on. Okay, so this one here is kind of tricky. Um, you need to think about this one as a quadratic. So you want to think about this one as a, as a, as a quadratic, and that's how you do this. Um, so basically what we need to do is we need to think about this one as 2 and then 2 to the x and then plus. Now when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So this is really 2 squared times 2 to the x power. So if I multiply those together, I get x plus 2 minus 12 is equal to zero. This isn't probably a problem that you'd think about how to do on your own, but that's the uh, that's the whole beauty of being in the math class is Mr. Jackie shows you how to do these different things. Um, I'm just changing this into a four, and then times two to the x, and then minus uh, 12 equals zero. So what happens next is we can factor this like a quadratic. So I make my two sets of parentheses, And then this would be 2x and 2 to the x. 2 to the x and 2 to the x. So think about this. When you multiply these two things together, let me do my highlighter here. So when I multiply this times this, you would add the exponents. And x plus x is 2x. So this times this really does make this thing right there. So that's kind of freaky. Now, 
we have to uh, multiply to make this and then add to make that in the middle. And then that's like your X term right there. So let me flip back to the pin and black and six and two would make the four. So positive six and minus two, minus two. So that times that makes the negative 12, and then that makes positive 4 in the middle. Okay, zero product property. And again, I don't worry about extraneous solutions on this because x can be any number, positive or negative or zero. It doesn't matter. So no, no need to worry about taking the log of something um, unless that happens down here, which actually it does. So we get 2 to the x plus 6 is equal to 0. Subtract the 6 over, 2 to the x is equal to negative 6. We can stop right in our tracks right there because 2 to any power is positive. 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to negative numbers is positive. So th there's no solution to this. So there's no solution to this side right here. Hopefully there's a solution to the other side because otherwise we have no solution overall. So 2 to the x is equal to, or I'll, I'll write it this way, I guess. 2 to the x minus 2 is, uh, it's, there we go, 2 to the x minus 2 is equal to 0. Add the 2 over, 2 to the x is equal to 2. Now I can do base exponent answer with this. The base is what? The base is what? log base 2, so base 2 of 2 is equal to x. And one of our properties that we learned in the earlier sections was the fact that if you have, uh, if these are the same, right, then the answer would be 1. So x is equal to 1. And that's my answer. Well, let's go check that out. 1 is the answer, really? Okay. Well, if I put 1 there, that would be 2, so that would be 4, right? If I put 1 there, that would be 3, that would be 8. Minus 12. Yep, that, that's it. So x is 1. That's kind of a, a cute little problem, isn't it? So there's the solution to that one. All right. So that takes us through um, the five examples in this section. So have fun with these problems. You know you will. And peace out.